Hey all you helium hotspot miners out there. I wanna to talk to you about a subject that people have asked me to talk about for a while now and I really didn't wanna get into it because it can be touchy for some people, but uh, I finally said, hey, why not? So these are things that I believe have a lot of inaccurate information out there and I'm trying to set the record straight. And it's four subjects and we're gonna talk about them in that order. And those are spoofing, gaming, transmit scale and finally last but not least having multiple hotspots in one location so again there's a lot of misinformation out there i am trying to be as exact and accurate as i possible as i can and how i explain it i'm going to do the best i can but if you find that my information is incorrect please let me know in the comments and cite your sources i'd love to know where you're getting your information from uh, as well as i'm sure you want to know where i'm getting mine so that being said let's talk about spoofing so what is spoofing well, generally speaking, in our terminology, spoofing is asserting your helium hotspot miner in an incorrect location other than where it actually is. So if I know geographically that my helium hotspot miner is in one specific location and I am off on the helium app by, let's say, a meter, is that spoofing? Yes. Uh, by 10 meters? Sure by a thousand meters absolutely by a thousand kilometers yes that's that's definitely spoofing so in all of those cases we are spoofing now does it matter to the helium network in terms of what it's trying to achieve maybe let's think about it in this terms um the helium network's purpose is to transfer data from an iot device to the network using your helium hotspot miner or somebody's helium hotspot miner. Now, if it doesn't know your exact location, does this make a difference? No, not at all. I mean, the miner will transmit the data and uh, either your miner will pick it up or somebody else's will. It doesn't really matter and it will connect it to the network. So the purpose of the helium hotspot network is not affected by having an inaccurate location of your miner. Now, what does it do? Well, certainly uh, as we are mapping what IoT devices in their location are getting picked up and not getting picked up, it makes the network's information of what helium hotspots are working and not working to this effect more inaccurate than accurate. And Sure, as a company, Helium wants to make sure it has as much accuracy as possible. But that kind of comes down to how accurate can you be and what kind of variance could you have? So let's go back to then uh, why uh, you might not have accurately uh, asserted your miner. So could be like you made a mistake and you just accidentally put yourself in the wrong location when you were hitting buttons and, and uh, getting it because you're super excited that you finally got a healing miner that showed up because it took a year. Not going to get into that right now. Okay, uh, another one could be that you just don't want people to know where you live. Uh, you know that if they use like hotspotty.net, they can find your exact house. You don't want them to find your exact house. So you want to be off by, well as much as you're allowed. And that comes down to a question of, well, what are you allowed to be off? Are you allowed to be off at all? Um, there's no allow, that's the thing. But let's go on. A third one is that you are trying to have as high a transmit scale as possible. And because of where you put your helium hotspot miner, uh, you are too close to other miners, it is causing your transmit scale to go down. And in order to bring it up, you want to, well, spoof. You want to place it uh, or assert it somewhere than it actually is and have a higher transmit scale. Okay, that's another reason. And fourth, and this is the big one, this is the one that causes problems for the network. You want to game the system. 
Now, to game the system, generally speaking, is to have, and I'm just going to put some specific numbers out there. As many of you know, when you look at your witnesses, uh, when you have a beacon, uh, there are 18 witnesses allowed. So if somebody theoretically puts 18 helium hotspots in their house, those helium hotspots, well, let's say 19 actually, because you need the one that's the beacon and then the 18 that are witnessing it. Uh, so 19, you could have 19 helium hotspots in one house that are all witnessing each other and make money that way. Now, does that help the network? No, because it's not able to transfer data. Will it actually even be useful in the long term uh, to have something, a system like this? No, because eventually data rewards are going to be worth more than proof of coverage rewards, and you're not going to make any money this way. But are people doing this? Yes. They are gaming the system all over the place. Sometimes you can see it, uh, such as in China, there are huge areas where you can look at the distancing of everything and you know that they are gaming the system. Uh, and then there are places in the United States where somebody has many and they put them all in their basement. Maybe they put more than 19. Maybe they put a thousand. I don't know how many they put, but point being is they need to spoof the locations to make sure that the transmit scale stays at a one and they get the maximum amount of rewards. Now, again, this doesn't help the system. This is basically uh, cheating the system and not being of any value to anybody. So we don't want to see something like this happen. And we see a lot of places where this occurs and people confuse this with just spoofing in general because spoofing is involved. And I get it and it is a bad thing, but that doesn't make spoofing itself a bad thing. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about uh, goes back to transmit scale. So let's take a step back. As I mentioned before, some people want to have as high a transmit scale as possible. So they spoof their location in order to make sure that their transmit scale is as close to a one as they can get. Now, transmit scale refers to transmitting. It doesn't refer to receiving. So keep that in mind. And one reason why it was done this way, and let me explain uh, a little further on uh, the whole transmit scale uh, changing. Uh, there was uh, proposals HIP 15 and HIP 17, which were basically trying to say, look, if you live in an oversaturated area, it doesn't really help anything. People in an oversaturated area shouldn't get equal amount of rewards, so we should lower what kind of rewards they can get. And uh, this system was really designed for just lowering it in total, uh, which is I think where people get this idea that if they have a low transmit scale, it's going to really affect the rewards. But the Helium Network realized that this would make it impossible for people who lived in downtown areas to be willing to invest in a better setup. So they said, well, look, this is for transmission. This only affects your transmitting. It doesn't affect you witnessing other beacons. Uh, so if you can witness beacons that are a one or at least as close to a one as you can get, you're going to get those kind of rewards coming to you regardless of what your transmit scale is. Now, when someone witnesses you, of course, if your transmit scale is like at a point two, they're going to get lower rewards. So I just want to be clear that when it comes to these things, what is being affected really for you, at least at this particular moment, is your challenges. That's right. Uh, if you look at the docs for, um, for Helium, you'll even see that it is the transmission and the challenges, or the challengee, as it were, uh, that get affected when it comes to the transit scale and nothing else. So if you have a really low transmit scale of like 0.05, uh, 
uh, but you're in the middle of a downtown city area on the 110th floor and you put that 9 DBI directional antenna uh, towards Naperville and uh, get all of the witnesses there that are all in the green, meaning a transmit scale of 1, you're going to get just as much rewards as if you had uh, a 1 transmit scale yourself. In other words, it's all about witnessing those beacons. So look at how many beacons you're getting, how many of those beacons are green, and the more of those you're gonna get is probably the most money you're gonna make from proof of coverage challenges at this point. Now, one reason why you would want to be sure that your transmit scale is a one is not necessarily just for you, but it's the indirect effect of the entire community you're in. Now, transmit scales are determined not just by the small hex, but by different hex resolutions. So, for example, uh, if there is a giant cluster of helium hotspots in one location, it could not just affect that location and maybe a few meters out, but it could affect it a thousand meters out. If you look at hotspotty.net and you look at, say, two helium hotspots that are very close together, you'll see the net effect within that hex. But then as you widen the area, you can see the net effect of having then multiple hotspots that are too close in a larger hex, and then ha that how that affects an even larger hex. So one reason why you would want to make sure that your transmit scale is better by spoofing is to help the entire community. If your community is at, let's say, a 0.5, such in Detroit, then perhaps spoofing your location and having your neighbors spoof their locations will change it from being at 50% back to a 1 or maybe at a 0.81. Who knows what it's going to be? Uh, you'll have to use some of the testing systems out there to find out. But point being is for those people who are trying to spoof because you are worried about your transmit scale and you want to get the maximum rewards, it's not directly going to make a difference to you. It's only going to indirectly make a difference because uh, your reward scale, or sorry, it's not even called reward scale anymore because it wants to make sure you know that it relates to transmission only. Your transmit scale uh, affects your neighbor's transmit scale. And if you are trying to get rewards from your neighbor, uh, you want their rewards to stay high. So you want to stay high. Okay, I, I hope that made better sense in terms of transmit scale. But it really is confusing to some people. They always tell me that, oh no, my transmit scale went down to a 0.5 because a neighbor showed up and put their helium hotspot there, asserted their location, and now this is going to destroy my rewards. And it is not. So stop complaining about it. It's only going to lower it if, if more than you and your neighbor go down to 0.5. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about then related to all of this is having more helium hotspots in one house. Now, can you do it? Absolutely. Uh, if you assert them all in one location, is that going to affect your transmit scale? Absolutely. Can that affect your neighbor's transmit scales? Maybe. And that's one reason why I do have a tendency to, in my tests, spoof my location because I don't want to affect my neighbors. I don't want to cause that problem. And I also don't want someone to know that I'm a guy that has five helium hotspots in my house. Okay, now, can you do this? Sure. Why would you do this? Okay, first of all, we talked about gaming, but let's clear that off the table. We don't want to do that for gaming purposes. What we want is a system set up that long-term is useful. And long-term to be useful means being able to take that data from IoT devices and transfer it more often than anybody else. So that being said, it might not be as useful to have five helium hotspots in your house that are all omnidirectional. Because right now, sure, it's great because we're basing it off of proof of coverage. Proof of coverage means that uh, one beacon gets 18 witnesses 
And if you are five of those 18, then yay, right? That's good for you. But when it comes to data transfer, that's not going to be useful unless we're talking about directional antennas. Now, let's face it. Uh, one thing you want is something that can not only transmit as strong as possible, but more importantly, because we are talking about witnessing, is receive as much as possible. And when you have a 9 dBi directional antenna, your ability to receive information is much stronger than anyone else's. So if an IoT device is transmitting data, you want to make sure you're the one that picks it up. And if you can pick it up better than anyone else, then they'll probably use you. Okay, so that being said, if you had, let's say, five directional antennas all positioned in different, well, directions <laughs> to pick up. I mean, we, we don't necessarily say north, south, east, west, because especially uh, directional antennas are not necessarily 90 degree. Uh, some of them are 60, some of them are 80. Let's assume at a 60, uh, I'm, well, my point being is I'm talking about five, right? So five, 360 degrees, divide that by five. Um, that is a best case scenario, in my opinion, uh, to have something like five helium hotspots all positioned in different directions and you being in an area where you can pick up as much as possible. Now, is this good for everybody's location? No, but can you do it? Yes. Uh, one thing you do have to do in order to make this, again, long-term viability uh, for not just proof of coverage, but for data, is make sure that you're not all relayed. Now, if you all are on the same, let's say, Wi-Fi network or using the same ISP provider, in other words, going through the same IP address, uh, will that work? Yes, it will. You can have them all on um, Wi-Fi on that same IP address and it'll be just fine. Uh, it'll work, but they'll all be relayed and that is not good for data. That's not going to work for data, but that will work for proof of coverage for the short term. But for the long term, you're going to want to think about either having static IP addresses, and I mean for the wide area network, for the internet, public static IP addresses, not private ones in your own network at home. Um, you're going to want to have those five so that the port can be forwarded to the right location. Uh, when we do port forwarding that we talk about in the house, we're generally doing port forwarding of like 44158 uh, specifically to your Helium hotspot because you have a whole lot of th uh, devices on your network and you want to make sure it's going to the right place. But when you have five, you, 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 you can't do that, right? So you can maybe point it to the one and that one is not relayed, but the other four are going to be relayed. I'm going to talk about a solution for this in the future. I am actually working at solving this problem. But I want to thank all of you who stuck with this video. I know it was a long video, but I hope you learned a lot from it. We got a lot of information out there. And I hope you realize that spoofing, quite honestly, by itself is not a bad thing. Gaming certainly is. Uh, and honestly, guys, if you are not concerned about your transmit scale affecting your neighbors, then please stop worrying about it. All right. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of information and want me to create more videos. Otherwise, happy mining.